What is going on everyone? Welcome in to episode 3 of our AS Roma series here of Football Manager 2023. I'm really excited to get into this episode, loving this series so far and I hope that you guys are really enjoying it as well. Thank you so much for joining me today. We have a fairly big one, just a small matter of Juventus away. So we will get into that very, very shortly. But before we do get into that, I do want to let you know, if you haven't gone and watched episodes one and two yet, go and check them out first. Lots of good stuff happening in there and you'll be able to catch up and get up to date with us before we roll into episode three. With regards to that, we've played quite a few games in between. So let me fill you in on what has been going on. We left with a really good win against Lazio in the Derby della Capitale, a 3-0 victory in the end after having bottled that 2-0 lead against Empoli and only drawing 2-2. We went into a double header against Dnipro of Ukraine, beat them both in the UEFA Europa League. Uh, naturally, as I have been doing, been making really 10-11 changes for every Europa League game, as Mourinho does like to do generally. And thankfully, that paid off for us. Uh, unfortunately, though, we then suffered our first loss of the season. As you'll see here, we were unbeaten until then. And it was against Sassuolo, who were having a really good season in their own right we just couldn't get going we couldn't get going at all got off to a really bad start in the first half first 15 minutes were down 2-0 already um, and as you can see it just wasn't a very good day at the office and going into this game against Inter Milan I was very very nervous they had won every single game up until then they'd played nine games in the league one nine hundred percent record and look at that a 2-1 victory. We pulled that one out of the bag. A brilliant, brilliant result. They actually went up, went ahead. Thanks to a Romelu Lukaku penalty. We have a look at the highlights here. Um, and I was kind of worried that it was going to be a bit of a snowball effect, that we'd see them see us kind of fall apart. Uh, but second half, we really turned it around. Zaniolo with some fantastic pressing here. He's really getting himself back off to full fitness. And look at that for a wonderful, mm. wonderful goal. We'll watch that one again, actually, because that was absolutely superb. As you'll see here, really does well to win that ball off Lukaku. And then just takes it, just drives with the ball, carries it forward. And it's a tremendous finish. And then we came to Andrea Bellotti off the bench. Abraham slots him through. And it is a lovely finish to get ahead of a Cherby. What a victory that was. And even today, if we have a look at the league tables shortly, you'll see that they've only lost one game this season and that was against us so that is a fantastic result truly truly brilliant performance a great comeback as well and really kind of kick things off again after that loss we had three nil back-to-back -back victories against Salernitana and then Ferenc Varos you will notice if you have a look at the lineups here a couple of big players Paolo Dybala and Lorenzo Pellegrini dropped from the team they've not been playing very well if you have a quick look here you'll see they're their rating 6.3 6.4 here again what we got here 6.8 6.5 they're not playing very well not playing very well at all so i warned them both i criticized them but discussed them and, and warned about their form and then dropped them for a couple of games and uh they as a result weren't in these two games they did both return for this game against udinese due to some tiredness um, and pellegrini did make the most of it as you'll see a free to win we were actually down by two goals to nil after 17 minutes and it was looking like another Sassuolo game in which obviously we went down within the first 15 minutes by two goals and just couldn't get back into the game but this time a much better response a mess up there as you can see at the back and then from this throw in out or out of nowhere Beto plants one in fair enough a really good finish not the best defending, but our pressing, as you can see here, really good. Watch this for a finish from Pellegrini. Absolutely lovely after a fantastic ball from Giorgio Scalvini. And then come to 34 minutes, Tammy Abraham gets sent through one-on-one. -on -one. And look at that. An absolute mess up from the keeper. It was sheer just pandemonium, I tell you. And thankfully, we went one better in the second half. In the 74th minute, Abraham sent through Nicola Zaniolo who slotted it away nicely, and what a return he's having to the team. We did also have this game against Wren. However, as you'll see with the 3-1 loss, again, we made 11 changes. Um, you know, we were prepared that that might happen, particularly going away. Um, and so that was unfortunate to lose that game. But thankfully, in the Europa League, as you'll see here, it's been fairly plain tailing. We've qualified top of the table, 15 points out of a possible 18, five wins out of six, 
cannot complain about that. And as a result, we get a free buy from the round of 32 and go straight into the knockout round of 16. So that is really pleasing and it's been a good campaign in the Europa League. Meanwhile, in the Serie A, things still looking decent. Now, obviously, we did drop a couple of points, but ultimately, look at Inter, even the fact that we beat them. They've just come out of the blocks flying. As have Napoli, really. Still unbeaten are Napoli. Uh, we did obviously draw to them earlier in the season. So it's really tough to try and keep pace with them. We do have a game in hand on them both. So, But that is against Juventus. So we'll see how that one plays out. But it's still really good. Obviously, the goal is to qualify for the Champions League. And at the moment, five points clear of Atalanta in fifth. So it's looking healthy at the moment. Meanwhile, for our opponents today, Juventus, 15th position, only won two games out of 11. They are really having a tough time of it to start this season. They really are. However, I've seen this story before and I know that despite the fact they're 15th, it doesn't mean much when we come into this game today. They've got a very, very good team, lots of really talented players. So this is going to be a tough, tough fixture. With regards to the tactics that we've been using, um, there's just been one small tweak that you may notice. Uh, the Boxer Box midfielder and the Mitzala have actually swapped sides. So now the, the Boxer Box is on the right and Mitzala is on the left. I did this because I noticed that the deep line forward was often dropping off and didn't have much runners in and around him on his side. They were all on the other side. And I just wondered whether that tweak might help getting the boxer box over to his side. He can run in that side. You've got Abraham, the advanced forward, running on the other side. And obviously the wing backs just trying to spread it out. Whether it's made too much of a difference or not, I'm not really sure. We made it around the stage of, I think, the Inter game or the Sassuolo game. Um, so we'll see. And so with regards to the lineup for this game against Juve, a couple of little tweaks here. Um, Zeki Celic actually comes in at right back. Spinazzola goes over to left back. Just a little bit kind of anxious about having Zalewski in a game like this. Um, you know, he did kind of drop the ball a little bit in, in games against big teams, the likes of Inter, for example. Um, so I'm a little bit worried that he's, he's not quite ready for that yet. So Spinazzola comes back out onto the left. We can match the pace of the likes of Quadrado as well. Zeki Celic on to the right. Zaniolo going into that deep line forward position. As you've seen, he scored a couple of goals. He's been doing well from that position. Whilst Dybala will be frustrated that, you know, against his former team, he isn't playing. But ultimately, look at that. You know, he's just not playing well enough and uh, doesn't deserve to be starting. We're sticking with the cautious approach here for this one. We'll see how that one plays out. Of course, if we are behind, then we will switch to the more attacking system as the game goes on. Now we look at them. They're going for the base 4 2 3 1 system. Again, it's going to be a tough one. It's going to be very, very tough. No Vlaovic up front. Kostic on the bench. Rabio McKenny also on the bench. That's a little bit of a surprise. Alexandro as well. They opt for Danilo instead. It's a first chance for them. Oh, Arcadius Milik at the back post. Who was that? Who should have been marking him? That is disappointing to be conceding from set pieces. Put a lot of stuff into them. Just having a look here. It's Chris Smalling. Chris Morning gets absolutely bullied. That's really disappointing because he's the one who I would bat most in that situation. So that is an absolute gut punch. We're approaching half time here. And finally, we've got a highlight. We've had nothing. We haven't had a sniff so far. It's been really disappointing. Spin at Soda getting the ball from that pass that was sprayed. Ball falls to Pellegrini. And there's the equaliser. 46th minute. Lorenzo Pellegrini coming up big. It's our first highlight of the game. And thankfully, we've managed to make the most of it. Spinazzola with a nice ball from Scalvini. He drives forward. Looks to then slot it through. But Quadrado manages to win the ball. Only goes as far as Pellegrini, though, who on his left foot drives it past the keeper. Really good response, that is. And thankfully, we can go in at half-time at only 1-1. We will take that. I definitely will take that. Just going to try and challenge them here. And it looks like it's gone down well. Seem motivated. Got a few players on bookings. And I'm just going to let them know to calm down a little bit. That really does make me a little bit nervous, I'll be honest with you. Particularly Scalvini. He'll miss the next game now because he was only a booking away from a suspension. He'll come out wide. Oh, Chiesa's been dropped again. Who was that? Was it the right back, Zeki Celic? That was really disappointing. I'm hoping it might have been offside. We're going to find out now. Goal disallowed. Thank God. Thank God. Just a spell of possession. Won't do as much harm. But Ibanez just gives it away. Gives it away. What are you doing? 
Well done, Tammy Abraham. Really good pressing. Looks to send through Zaniolo. And what a goal that is. Turned it around. It is 2-1. Nicola Zaniolo, please do not be offside. Oh, yes. That is what we like to see. Nicolo Zaniolo. What play from Tammy Abraham. He wins it and produces a stunning through ball. It's a lovely touch. And Zaniolo on the half volley shoots it past Wojciech Szczesny. That is a fantastic goal. And what a response that is to going 1-0 down. They'll look to progress it forward then. Bonucci. Bremer. Oh, Abraham wins. He's caught him in possession. This is a brilliant opportunity. And Tammy Abraham makes no mistake. 3-1. It's brilliant pressing. A mistake. I think it was from Bremer at centre-back. Paredes back to Bremer. Yes, it was. Tammy Abraham wins it off him. And he's through on goal all of a sudden. And surely he isn't going to miss that one. Really nice play. 68 minutes and we have taken control of this game. And now we can opt to make a couple of subs. Celi can come off. We'll bring Zalewski on and move Spinazzola over to that side. Going to take Ibanez off as well, who is looking tired and not having the best of games. Scalvini is also making me nervous on that booking. So we are going to bring on uh, Roberto Jaliadini for him. Oh, that is a lovely ball. And he sent Abraham through. Oh, he's got to score. He has to score that. What a fantastic ball that was. We're going to make two more substitutes. Belotti is going to come on for Abraham. We're also going to take Zaniolo off, who's on a booking, and bring on Paolo Dybala against his former team and see if he can do anything in these last 15 minutes or so. Quadrado sends a nice ball through to Rafia. Oh, it's a goal. It is a goal. Hamza Rafia with a lovely ball from Quadrado as well. We don't manage to stop it. Is it Gabia who does get beaten for pace? No, it's Smalling again. Smalling has had a truly horrendous game. He has been at fault for both goals. He's not enjoying life at all. We need to make a tweak here now. Just going to move that time wasting up a little bit here. So we are just frequently doing it every opportunity. We need to hold on. Five minutes of added time. Oh, it's squeaky bum time, as Steve Bruce would say. We've got a highlight here. Spinazzola through to Cristante. Can he finish it? Yes, he can. What a stunning goal from Brian Cristante. It was episode two last time out. He scored two wonder strikes, and he may have just added another one to the list there. And he has finished this game off well and truly. A brilliant response. Brian Cristante with the ball from Spinazzola. The quick layoff from the right-hand side. And he sends those away fans into Rutgers. And there it is. Full time. 4-2 is the result. And what a fantastic win that is away at Juventus. Say what you want about where they are on a table. But they are such a tough team. So many good players. And we had to be at our best. We really did. Even though Chris Smalling decided to have a day off today. So that is a fantastic win. And I'm going to let the players know about that as well. A really good way to go into second place, as you'll see here, shooting up the table now and just two points behind Inter in first place. It's been very good, very, very positive. It's probably also worth bearing in mind that Allegri just got sacked in this and that was the first game that they had under the caretaker manager, Paolo Montero. So naturally, you will expect kind of changes with the lineup and stuff, as we saw with a couple of them on the bench. And, um, you know, that probably did help our cause. And so just a gap of two days before this next game against Cremonese. Now, they are 18th. The reason why I wanted this game, though, in terms of showing it in the episode, is because it is the final fixture before that long winter break of the World Cup. And we do not reconvene until January 5th. So nearly two months off, pretty much two months off. We're on 9th of November now. Uh, so that is a long, long break. And we're going to see how interesting it's going to be to kind of deal with that, how we can keep our players fit. Do we organise some friendlies and stuff across the course of it? It's going to be very interesting, very interesting to kind of get back to that one. Um, and so hopefully, most important of all, though, we can kind of round off on a good result um, going into that international break. Looking at the results, Juventus and Napoli drew 0-0. Uh, which means that actually they have kind of dropped points of Napoli and we can extend the gap to them by three points. So that's a really important one uh, in terms of making the gap between them bigger. 
Uh, Juve, meanwhile, still struggling. Only five points off the relegation zone as it stands. So, uh, yeah. So for this next match, as you can see, we've actually got quite a few tired players. So we've had to make a few changes. Ibanez, Smalling, Zeki Celic, Lorenzo Pellegrini, all tired. We've still got some playing, the likes of Mancini, Spinazzola, Abraham. Because I'm still worried about we're, we're making too many changes to this next league game. And also, um, you know... A, in such good form, I, I want to keep them on the pitch. We can kind of make the subs with us having now five subs. We are able to kind of mix it up in game if we need to. But as a result, we've, we've made a few changes. Roberto Jaliadini as well coming in for the suspended Giorgio Scalvini. Um, and also Nicolo Zaniolo now dropping into that Mezzala role for the tied Pellegrini. Paolo Dybala has a great opportunity to get himself back to some form here because at the moment it's really starting to tail out for him. So he's coming to this game, I'm going to ask them to show that their recent praise has been justified. And having a look at the lineup here, Cremonese, you've got some good players. They're obviously on bad form, but there are some good players there. So there's certainly no pushovers. But again, you know, we do have to expect to be winning this game. It's been a very slow start. Only one chance, three now, but nothing on target. No highlights so far. This is the first one of the game. Kambula looking to send one forward. Bit of a hidden hope there. Cristante manages to reclaim. Spinazzola, Dybala, Abraham looking to slot that one through. Zaniolo's there. And there's the first goal of the game with the first highlight. Nicolo Zaniolo getting off to a tremendous start after returning from his injury. So good to see. It's Tammy Abraham with the assist. Dybala also having a little kind of mention in that move as well. Just that quick layoff to Abraham. And he sent through Zaniolo. That's lovely play indeed. And 1-0 it is. 27 minutes gone. Dybala whips this one in. Kampula's there. And there's the second goal of the game. Paolo Dybala finally getting himself something to do with the scoring. And Kumbulla replacing Chris Morning for this game. Rotated in at the back post. It's a lovely header. Rises highest. And that is a tremendous well-worked set piece. 2-0. So we come to half-time here. Just going to tell them not to get complacent. Um, I'm also going to make a change or two here. We're going to take Spinazzola off, bring on Zeki Celic. We're also going to take off Tammy Abraham and bring on Andrea Bellotti. Gabriel. That's a nice ball to Zaniolo. It's the right one. That's an even better ball to Dybala. And there's the goal. Paolo Dybala. We challenged him to step up in this game. And he has done that. One assist. And now one goal. But it's the ma manner of the goal that is the most impressive thing. Because it's a wonderful ball from Zaniolo. But an even better finish from Paolo Dybala. Look at that. A looped half volley over the keeper to dink it. And that makes it 3-0. Gabia. El Shadari looks to find through Zalewski and does manage to slot it through to him. He'll come over to his right-hand side. Jaliadini, oh my God. Belotti's there on the rebound to tap it in and make it four. But Jaliadini can feel very hard done by that he hasn't managed to get himself a goal there. Because that was an absolute thunderbolt of a strike. It really was. Zalewski laid it off to him. Hammered it, hits the bar, so unlucky. But Belotti doing what good strikers do. He's ready, anticipation, following it in. And he taps it in to make it 4-0. And it's a good season. He's having himself as well, as is this team. A good 4-0 victory. A nice one to round off the first half of this season. And we'll have a quick look there. Inter do scrape a win against Monza. So they do stay at the top of the table Elsewhere, though, Lazio getting beaten by Fiorentina, who are having a good, decent season, for sure. Still in the Europa League places, as they'd be looking to aim for. Uh, elsewhere, though, Atalanta, we are now eight points above them, but they do have a game in hand. So with the final results of the weekend, Atalanta get a win, Milan get a win. So that's how it's looking. Five points clear of Sassuolo in fifth place as we look to solidify our place in the Champions League positions. So that's it then. The season will be on pause whilst we have this mid-season break for the World Cup. Uh, we actually, if we have a look here, only have eight players going to the World Cup, which isn't too bad. So with regards to injuries and things along those lines, uh, I'm not happy that Genie Wijnaldum is being called up. He, he, you know, he doesn't need that. He needs to get back to fitness. He's still injured. Um, you know, he's not back to fitness for a few days yet. Um, so I'm not happy about that at all. I've got a bad feeling they're going to aggravate his injury, which doesn't work well. I wanted to kind of get him back in, in this kind of mid-season break and, and just slowly working back to fitness. 
but we'll see how that one goes. With regards to training, even then we're on the mid-season break. We're not back until Saturday the 10th of December, so a month before we even play full games. So what I can do is I can really beat them up first couple of weeks, get some uh, you know, physical training in, and then we can you know, work some of the friendlies in before we return to that game against Atalanta. With regards to the next episode, I think what we are going to do is we are going to return for Atalanta and Bologna, two big games. Obviously, Atalanta in fourth position at the moment, chasing us in contention with us for the uh, Champions League spaces. So that'll be a good one. Also, it is naturally the start of transfer window. Again, I know I keep saying this and going back on it, but this time I genuinely don't expect much movement in the way of signings. We'll obviously have a look at some pre-contract signings, see if we can get anyone on a free ahead of the next season. Um, but with regard to actual permanent signings, we don't have any money, as you'll see here. 199,000 in the red at the moment. So, um, you know, if anything, we need to sell players. And that is something we will look at doing if we can get any players off the books who just aren't quite contributing. El Shirawi is one who I am thinking of. You know, he's not playing much. He's on 92,000 a week. You know, I, I think it's time. So, with that being said, I think we're going to finish it there. If you made it through to the end, thank you. Thank you so much for watching and taking the time to watch me just play Football Manager. I really do appreciate it. I hope that you're enjoying the series. Make sure to let me know any suggestions that you might have in the comment section down below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, ring the bell to get notifications every time I upload, and drop a like on the video if you've enjoyed it. Check out my gaming podcast, video games podcast with me and my pal Ash. The link is down below. We do have a recent episode that's came out where we are talking about FM23, so do give that one a listen. I think you'll enjoy it. And also check out my Patreon, links in the description. You can get access to a range of fantastic perks and rewards. It's a great way to support the channel if you can afford it. With that being said, we are going to finish it there. So until next time, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you soon. <coughs>